Hello everyone. I trust you have watched the video, the silent video, the introduction for chapter one, Singapore legal system that says about the Singapore legal system is founded on the three elements, right? The Singapore law tradition, the three organs of the state, and the sources of Singapore law. We will be looking at each of them more precisely. Now, let's look at chapter 1.1, the common law tradition. As, as we know, Singapore was colonized by England, and therefore our legal system is largely derived based on the English common law. But then what is common law? The word common means it's common to everyone, everyone follow it, right? Uh, and everyone follow it. That means there must be something being set to it for everyone to follow. How, uh, anyway, English common law is also known as the judge-made law. Right? The judge-made law. And by judge-made law, we know that there is a court proceeding when judges decide cases that are assigned to them. And the judge's decision are written down in a document called judgment. Now back to it, common law tradition, we shall look at two elements, right? Two elements or rather three elements that forms the English law, uh, sorry, the common law tradition. Right? The first one we are going to look at will be the judicial precedent or the judicial, judicial precedent. The word precedent means it's like a custom, right? It's like a custom precedent. For example, if I allow all of you to come late and I still take your attendance as per normal, I do not put additional remarks that you are late, I have already set a precedent. And one day, one of you came late and I said, okay, you are late today, I'm going to mark you late. I'm going to put an additional remark there to indicate that you are late. And guess what? You will not be happy, right? You say, teacher, all, the, all along you have been, you have not been doing that to those of us who are late for class. Why are you doing that now, right? We already have a precedent and we have a bit previous experience, right? We, although we come late, you will still mark us as a normal present. Understand? So there's a meaning of precedent. So, so for judicial precedent under the common law, meaning the judges will follow the previous judgment of the previous judges in order to help them to come up with their decision. Right? As you can look at your notes there, a judicial precedent is also called the stare decisis in, in Latin, right? in the Latin language. And according to the author, Tabaluyan, the author of the Singapore Business Law, he, he stated that a precedent is the principle whereby past cases decided by superior courts that are binding and authoritative for future cases. This superior court, their decision is binding and is authoritative for future cases. Future cases that is decided by lower or similar level of court. Similar level means if it is a court of appeal, the future court of appeal. Of course, lower court means court they are lower. There's high court. Of course, we have high court. We don't say there's low court, right? There's no low court. For example, in Singapore, we have the Singapore high court. Then below the Singapore high court, we may have the district court, the magistrate court, which we will talk about that later. As of now, just understand judicial precedent. Right, judicial precedent, that means the judge will make use of the precedent, the previous cases, the past cases to help them to come to their decision. Okay. And yeah, that, that was what I say just now. And there is a small formative assessment for you to go through. That means you have to go to the law net, right? The law net in the SP library portal and 
I will show you during tutorial, but you should try to use the e-resources in our SP portal. Click L and find for Lornet and try to find the case of the Dream Star. All right, Dream Star. And when you get the case of the Dream Star, try to download them, download them in the PDF. And then in the judgment itself, you will see a section called cases referred to, right? Cases referred to. For simplicity, I have a screenshot of the cases referred to here. All right, and you can see the amount of cases that the judge in this case, the judge of the Dream Star, has referred to the cases. And the arrow pointing up here is to tell you that behind those cases, there is an indication of some short form. In this example, it is F O L L D. It means follow. That means the judge in the Dream Star followed this case. And you may also see refer. The second arrow show refer. That means the judge of this case in the Dream Star refer to this case, but she did not mention whether she follow or she she she, she did not follow. All right. So the formative assessment, the, the question in the formative assessment is asking you, do you think the judge follow all the cases she referred to? The answer is no, right? You have to explain why no, because the cases listed down behind the title of the case has got an indication of follow or not follow or just refer, right? The question is asking you, did the judge follow all no, the answer is no. She only, only followed those she has indicated as follow. Okay. Okay, there's a term called case law. Usually judgment, we we also call them case laws. Alright, so next in the future you may hear I'm mentioning case law. You should know I'm talking about a judgment. Alright, so that is judicial precedent. The second element of the common law tradition that we are going to look at will be chapter 1.1.2 titled is Ratio Decidendi. Right? Or in short, we just call them ratio. It means the reasons of the rationale or the rationale for the decision. Right? The reasons or the rationale of the judge's decision. When the judge made a decision, his or her reason. But of course, his or her reason cannot be out of whims and fancy. Like what? Oh, today I'm in a bad mood. I woke up. I have a bad mood. So my decision will follow my mood. Right? As a judge, you can't do that. That will be in violation of natural justice. Right? So when making judicial decision, that means a court judgment, the judges usually narrate or read the facts of the case state what they consider of the case and state the relevant legal principle what the re relevant legal principle comment on past precedent right remember they refer to the previous case and give their decision on the outcome right the decision on the outcome that will be the ratio right and the ratio is the legal principle that formed the basis of the judge's decision and it binds all the lower courts in the same hierarchy. Courts have got hierarchy. We will, when we look at the court system, we look at the hierarchy, which is the highest court of law, which is the lowest court of law. All right. So for 1.1.2, there's an activity. Uh, let's look at activity. Same thing. It says based on the dream star, the case just now, the dream star, turn to page 511. Read paragraph 107 under the header of failure to keep a proper lookout. This example is taken out is to show you the ratio, right? The, the legal principle for failure to keep a proper lookout. If the Dream, Dream Star is a collision case. So both ship owners suing one another. One ship owner suing another ship owner to say that, hey, your, your, your crew did not keep a proper lookout. So the judge have to decide. It's not just about how true they are keeping a proper lookout. The legal principle of keeping a proper lookout. So what is the legal principle of keeping a proper lookout? 
right? So when you if you turn to page 511 of the judgment and read paragraph 107, you will be able to see more clearly. All right. So I, I'm not going to go through here, but I just want you to read this paragraph after you download. And based on the definition of ratio decidendi, pick up the ratio decidendi in this paragraph. Okay. Yeah, this is the same thing that I showed just now. Next, we will come to the, the next, or rather the last element for the common law tradition that is called obiter dictum. Obiter dictum, or in short, you can just mention obiter, means it's a saying in passing. Or it's a saying by the way. Alright, what does that mean? It is it's actually referred to the statement made by judges which are just incidental to or go beyond the main points necessary for deciding the case at hand. That means it's not so relevant. There's some pertinence there, but it's not re relevant. And they usually have persuasive effect. Huh? Can be used to persuade for you to follow. But they are not binding. right? Not binding means they don't have legal effect. You cannot use the obiter dictum and tell the other person say ah you have to follow no right only ratio ratio that ratio then you have to follow okay so obiter dictum is not binding and is not binding to the subsequent court or the lower court all right so we are done with chapter 1.1 common law tradition please do the quiz after this video before you embark on the next chapter, alright, the next chapter 1.2.